Back as a kid in the early 90s, I got this book, Windows After Hours by W. Edward Tiley. It was cool because it told you about all sorts of cool things to do in Windows 3.1. That's so cool. But the biggest reason I loved it was because it came with a floppy disk full of shareware and freeware goodies. Since we didn't have internet at the time and bothering friends for use of their BBS connection was time consuming, having all of this stuff on one disk was fantastic. And one of the games included on the floppy was made by Carl Beeling in 1991 called Herman and the Falling Rocks, also known simply as Herman or Frox. <laughs> Frox. I love that. It's like a sci-fi curse word, like Goram or Frack or Shazbot. Herman and the Frocks. How frockin' awesome is that? Oh, you're not amused? Well, you can frock off. Now, at the point in my life when I got this game, all I had ever really played were DOS games, so I wasn't aware that Herman and the Falling Rocks is a ripoff of Repton, which is a ripoff of Boulder Dash, which is pretty much a ripoff of The Pit, which is somewhat similar to Elements of Dig Dug, which is, uh, yeah, you get the idea. Totally original ideas and video games go hand in hand, at least in the realm of excess sarcasm, and Herman is no exception. But I didn't care what it really was. All I cared about was that it was on my computer and that it was a game. I could play it. But is it any good? Well, let's toss aside those rose-tinted goggles for a bit and find out. Once you install the hard drive crippling 73 kilobyte game, just open it up and you'll be greeted with a good old shareware nag screen, giving three different tiers of payment depending on how much more of the game you wanted to get. I've never been able to get the full version of the game, so I'll just be looking at the version 1.03 shareware game here. Start it up and you'll notice that it only takes up about half the screen space and unfortunately you can't resize anything so you just deal with it. You've got some menus with basic options, like starting a new game, saving, loading, and getting help with getting help. Seriously, if someone needs help with the help, then they just need help. Starting a new game drops you in a world where you are Herman and rocks are falling, or something. So the objective of the game is very simple. Collect all flowers and do not get hit by a rock. Yeah, so that's actually the uh, official objectives listed in the help menu. You can't get much more concise than that. Pretty much, it's just like Boulder Dash. You play a little guy roaming around a grid-based level, trying to collect something and not get smashed by frocks. You use the numeric keypad to move, which allows you to move diagonally as well as the typical cardinal directions. Just collect all the flowers and make sure not to set a rock loose since it will murder your face. I mean, you are a face, right? I don't know what else you are, you're just a creepy face. Actually, what the crap? What is Herman? I've seen some mock-up artwork on the game creator's website, and it shows Herman as a little boy. Well, if he's a little boy, then why does he look like a face skull? Face skull face disembodied psilocybin trip thing, whatever the case. When a rock crushes your uh, Herman head, you lose a life and you have to restart the entire level, just like in Boulder Dash. However, this ends up being a bit more unforgiving than Boulder Dash. For one thing, the rocks fall instantly, so you don't have time to move out of the way if one falls. Although, perhaps to make up for this, if you happen to touch the sides of rocks stacked on top of each other, it won't set the entire pile loose like it would in Boulder Dash or other equivalents. But when it comes down to it, that doesn't really make things much easier because the puzzles themselves are downright brutal. It's pretty common for these games to have you run into sections of levels that are designed to trap or kill you if you even move one tile incorrectly, but this happens very frequently and almost immediately once you start playing Herman. It's a pretty big mind bender just to get past level 3, much less getting through all 20 something levels. And then once you do get through all of them, there really isn't much to keep you coming back. All you might have is the ability to complete the level faster for a higher score, and there's a save game feature anyway, so even if you die, you can just start again from the same level. If you were to buy the full game or try out the later 2.0 demo version, you can use a level editor to create your own levels for your freaky shrunken head to get crushed by rocks in, so that's something. In fact, there are several new additions in the later versions of the game, like the aforementioned editor, a new interface, and incredibly obnoxious sound effects that I sincerely hope were a joke. So when it comes down to it, is Herman and the Falling Rocks worth playing again? 
Well, unless you grew up with it and want some nostalgia, Frox is pretty frock and mediocre. It just doesn't have the charm, the aesthetics, the physics, or the level design that made games like Repton and Boulder Dash classics. It's not too bad for an early 90s shareware game, I suppose, but I could not imagine paying more than a dollar or two for it. Much less the impressive $30 the creator of the game still seems to demand for it. Yeah, apparently it's still available for purchase through mail order at its 1991 full price, which is just weird. Actually, there's even a follow-up game listed here, Herman's Second Adventure, but this is the only reference I can find to it online at all, and there is no link to a demo of any kind, so I don't even know if it exists. Oh well, I'm fine with the original Herman on my Windows 3.1 machines. Even though it's not that great, it does have that nostalgic value to me because it was the first game of its type that I ever played, and even though objectively it's kinda lame, it does function and it doesn't aim to be anything more than it is. And it is frockin' acceptable, and nothing more.